Hi, welcome to the Parenting Bridge podcast. I'm Dr. Michelle Alden, a licensed professional counselor, parent coach, and family therapist. And I'm here to help you to build a bridge to your best family possible. So I want to talk about kids and anxiety-driven behaviors as it relates to school and just some things that you can do as parents to help the kids help your kids with school if they're having a hard adjustment or if they're really struggling. Maybe it's an ongoing struggle that just picked up where it ended last year. And so I just want to talk to you about that today because what I've been reading and what I'm looking at in terms of research is that schools across the country are saying that there's an uptick in disruptive behaviors. And it it actually makes sense to me from my understanding that there was increasing behaviors throughout the spring of last year in 2023. And so heading into this 2023-24 school year, right up until the end of last year, there was, it didn't end on a good note and things were not resolved, at least with a lot of the families that I work with. So summer happened and I think sometimes we feel like, okay, that's going to be a good reset and kids are going to maybe be in a different school or a different situation, and it's all going to be better. That's our hope, right? And that it's going to reset, and we're going to get them help and ready. But we're finding that it's um, 71% of parents are saying that kids experienced challenge last, challenges last school year, and that's from a Harris poll that was done. 71%, you know, and so that's, that's a lot. And, and even if your child is doing okay, just realize that they're around classroom kids in the classroom that are not doing well and that that affects everybody. So it's not like you can just move to a different school and it's all going to be better. Like this is really pretty intense stuff going on at schools. And it's been to the point where, you know, room clears and um, kids, you know, they just having total disruptions and, and challenges in the school, much like when I first started doing this work, it was like the schools would be like, oh, we're not seeing the same problems. And it would, and they wouldn't necessarily believe what the parents were telling them was going on at home. Well, now it's like what was going on at home is happening in the schools. So, um, and it's happening everywhere the, across the board. So these kids are struggling everywhere. A lot of them, not, not everybody, but some, a lot of kids are. So 86% of school age children are reporting that they they worry at least some of the time. And most of those worries are around school. So about 66% of those worries have to do with school-related things like friendships, getting bullied. And then the other things that kids are worrying about are friendships, um, family members. Some are worried about the way that they look, being bullied, about safety. And those worries are more level, like, you know, they have kind of more of the normal kind of worries about those things. But this is, you know, I guess sometimes that's the question too, like how much worry is too much? And how, what can we do to help? Because I think that as we know that like the di- kids getting diagnosed with um, like ADHD and other mental health illnesses is starting younger and there's more of that going on. And so sometimes I wonder too, like just normal like anxiety type things, worry that kids would have going into a, a new classroom, going in, starting a new school year, you know, all of these kind of things. It then then I think are we our parents sometimes jumping in too quickly? It's like, oh, they have anxiety, they have this, they have that. You know, how much of this can we help with at home? I'm you know, if you've listened to me at all, I'm like very or, organic about like, okay, you know, there's some things we can do as parents and we want to help kids to be able to to do this because I believe it, with everything in me that we are really designed to be resilient, but we have to teach resiliency skills. And so I think that we have things that our kids are faced with that that we probably never were faced with as kids, but um, but we can still help them to work through those. And, and it's not that we can solve every problem, and it's not that every problem is something that a parent can solve, but we definitely want to, to not have, you know, over half of our kids are, are struggling at, at school and not doing well. Like, that's that just tells me that something else is not right or not going, you know, something's off. So, you know, one thing that we can do with kids just in some of their kind of everyday worries and things like that is, you know, we can help them to be able to dump those feelings of discontent 
and unsettledness or just even the things that they're worried about. Like they should be able to tell you those things as the as a parent and and you don't have to take it personally. Like if they are complaining about something that happens at school or or worried about like a particular kid or whatever, you don't have to always jump in so quickly to solve it. Or if they're like, you know, mad at you because you made them change schools or, you know, something like that, you don't have to take it personally. Like it's okay for kids to be able to dump those feelings of discontent and unsettledness and worry on you without you trying to solve it. You know, you don't have to solve it all the time. Sometimes these kids, are all of us, we just feel better if we just say it, right? So when your kid's expressing that worry, it's okay to let them do that. And most kids are really struggling to communicate that with their words. And so then that's how they do, they do that with their behaviors, right? So I want you to look beyond the behaviors and try to figure out what's going on. But in doing that, you also have to realize that it's not so that you can solve it in a way that takes that all away from them. And I think this is really critical because we can have strong emotions and we can feel a certain way about things. And then, you know, we have to be able to move on from that. So especially since COVID is that if your child is complaining about something at school, if you're, if they're having a problem in the classroom, I just want to caution you as a parent to not, to not jump in and, and be the one that is like, so now there's this, this thing where it's like you and your child kind of against the school. You got to be really, really careful in this because, um, and I'm going to remind you in this conversation about this several times, but what you, how you back up the teacher is going to matter a lot in the, in the success that you, your child and the team at school is going to have. Are there things that need to be taken care of at school? Are there accommodations and, you know, IEP meetings and 504 meetings and all that kind of stuff that need to happen to make sure that your child is getting what they need and that, that everybody on their school team understands, you know, where you're coming from? Yes. But you want to continually be thinking about building a bridge between you and the school and the school and home. And so I work a lot with parents on this because I think what happens, and I think this especially happened since COVID, is that it kind of became like the family against the school kind of. And and I just you just have to, and you may think, well, you know, they don't, the kids don't hear me talk about that or they don't, you know, they don't know like, you know, but I have been in so many homes almost every day where things get said about the teachers or the school or, you know, some random things that make it sound like the school doesn't know what they're doing. And then we send our kids there and they're supposed to follow what the adults are telling them to do. But all the adults in their life are bad mouthing each other, right? And I don't think that the school is necessarily bad mouthing you as the parent. They may they may have disagreements with you know, what they're doing and they may think that, you know, some of these p- behaviors are are caused by you. And so you may feel that, but I highly doubt that they're talking to your child about you as the parents in the same way that you as the parents may be talking about the school in while your children are around. And you may think like they're, it doesn't matter or whatever, but it's, it doesn't really help you have your child's back. Because I want you to think about how many hours a day they spend in school and they really need to feel safe there. And they cannot feel safe if they feel like you as their parents do not agree with the school? Why are you sending them there for eight hours a day or longer in some cases if you don't ag- agree with them? You you need to back them up. And if there's a problem, go t- to the school and talk to the adults about that without your child there. Like hash it out and get it figured out. But and if it's not going to work, like if the if there's too much bridge, too much water under the bridge and too many things have happened at that particular school and you can't get on the same team with the school team, then you may have to really consider moving them to a different school. And But what I found is that what the families that I worked with, if there's been a lot of bad problems that have happened at schools, we have moved kids out of the school to give them a fresh start. But if the parent is in the habit of looking at the school with critical lens, which I'm not saying, again, that you shouldn't, it's just if your kids are picking up on that, and they are, if you're saying it, that it's causing more problems at school. It causes problems for the teachers because basically we're raising a bunch of kids, I think, that don't, it's like, well, I don't agree with you anyway. So why should I have to do what you say? My mom my mom and dad don't agree with you. My grandma doesn't agree with you. It's like, it's like, and we have kids that are willing to say that to teachers. And so what 
what can the teachers do? You know, like the school needs that support and you guys have to work as a team together. That is your school team. And you you have to choose to be on that team. And is it easier for them to not have a parent on it? Sometimes. And so they may put pressure on you to be doing, you know, other, you know, other parts of it, you know, like we're going to talk about as far as homework and stuff and not really wanting you to be involved in this other stuff. But if things are happening with your kid, then you have to work together with them to, to resolve it. Like what what's going, how what can be done. And I've been in some amazing IEP and 504 meetings with different schools and different school districts where the team is, I mean, you have a whole, you have access to a whole team of people that have specialists and are trying to make things work, but you have, you have to kind of be invested in being part of that team to make that happen. And I, I, I can, you know, consult with you and help you with that. But, um, but there is this piece of it where you have to really evaluate your feelings about it and what you're willing to say, because if education is important to you and you want it to be important to your kids, you have to hold it with respect and, and you have to help your kids to have that respect by how you treat it and how you talk about their teachers or their coaches or the school staff or, or whatever it is. I, I cannot tell you the number of kids that will tell me, you know, almost in their parents' words about, well, we don't like this teacher or we think that this teacher, you know, did this or that, you know, and I... I just think that we're losing something valuable in what we have if if that's going on. So that's a little bit of my soapbox there. But, but I think that you have to really look in terms of like what it does to your kid's anxiety because they're not going to be able to piece that together, that they're anxious about school because this is the general feel about it at home that you don't like their teacher. You know, it may sound like you guys are together on it. Like, yeah, I'm helping them because, you know, they have a really hard teacher this year or or, you know, she's unreasonable or she's got it out for my kid. But then you're still sending your child every single day. So, of course, they're going to have anxiety. And that anxiety is going to cause behavior problems at some level, whether it's not turning in homework, whether it's being disrespectful, whether it's picking fights with other kids, whether it's throwing desks in the classroom. And those are the kind of behaviors that the school's dealing with right now, trashing bathrooms or classrooms, fighting verbally or physically with other kids and with staff. There's online fighting that's happening, um, kids running out of classrooms, leaving the school, even little kids like running away. Um, Some kids just putting their heads down and refusing to talk. Shorter than usual tempers, disruptiveness and disregard for adults, including parents, teachers, and staff. So just this, you know, there's a lot going on. And if your kids are not part of that are not experiencing it, just realize like they, I mean, if they're not the ones doing it, they are still experiencing it and they may still be part of it. They may not be the one, the reason why the room had to be cleared, but they may have been in a room clear and it's, it's already kind of produces its own trauma, right? And its own unsettledness in the classroom. And so just know that by not not really standing by your school and saying like, wow, like the school did such a good job handling that, or this is what they're doing, or this is how we're going to handle it. You know, um, it's really, it's, it's, it's going to send your kids anxiety to skyrocket. So even in high school, kids need to know that you're standing, that the adults are standing shoulder to shoulder to protect our kids. And it doesn't mean that everybody is perfect. It doesn't mean that there isn't hard teachers or bad teachers or any of those kind of things, right? But you got to do your part in in being support of to the teacher. If they're not going to get moved out of that classroom and it's really a bad teacher for them, then you're going to have to really figure out how you're going to deal with that. If they are going to get moved out of that classroom and it was that teacher, you're still going to have to really be careful about what you say about that because it's still instilling in your kids this sense of like they you know just all of it that certain people have it out for them they they can't trust teachers they can't trust the school and then you know you move this child from one classroom to another classroom because that teacher is better but they're all on the same staff together and and they're staffing what's happening and this kid is going to get moved into another classroom next year and these teachers know know these kids that are coming up you know through the classroom so just be really careful. Like your school is is a support system and 
just just really watch that. The other thing that I'm hearing a lot from teachers and about the kids is that there's this disregard for the rules. And schools are really struggling. And I think that it's really started in the last year or so um, when, we, when kids started coming back from COVID. There was more than, you know, I think at first kids maybe were glad to be back and, you know, happy to be in the classroom. But there was a lot of unsettledness all through that. And it looked like to a lot of kids, probably everybody, and including adults, that nobody knew what was going on or what to do, right? And everybody was kind of blaming everybody else. Like nobody could make the right decisions about any of it, you know when to send kids home, when not to send kids home, um, to wear masks, to not wear masks, how to handle all of that. Very, very disruptive to just the on the ongoing flow of things, right? So the schools have been really struggling to set up those clear expectations about what their, this happens, here's what we're going to do. And I think that there's been a lot of like increase in behaviors. And so the schools having to evaluate that because we can't just send over 50% of the students home if they're having these problems. And if your child's on an IEP or a 504 for behavior reasons, you for sure can't just send them home when there's a behavior issue. Like that's that's already been noted that they have these issues. So working with the school on what those expectations are going to be so that you know what's going to happen in your and your child does too and that you're not taken off guard. If your school doesn't have good policies, then you may have to help figure that out. You know, if it's like, well, it was always our policy. If this happens and we send kids home or we call you as the parent, then you may have to work with the school and like, okay, well, that's not going to work to call me and have me take the child out. Because remember, with our kids, with their executive functioning, um, if something happens at school, an incident happens at school, and then and then they're expecting you as the parent to deal with that at home, it's not a good fit you know, for that. So you got to really work with the school on that. Like, hey, they need to have the consequences of what happened happen right there. What what are you going to do about this situation? Like if something happened on the bus in the morning on the way to school, and then you're supposed to deal with it at three or four o'clock in the afternoon when they get home, they don't have the working memory where they can hold those events in their mind to really deal with that. And it puts a lot of pressure on you and your parent-child relationship if you're trying to deal with what happened at home. So ask the school, like, what what did you do about that when that happened? You know, what what's your protocol? How do you want to solve this? Rather than just saying, oh, they're they're telling me this because they expect me to do something about it. They, they might not be expecting you to do anything about it, but it's important that you know if your child had a big meltdown at school, you want to know. I, I was in a school district where they didn't tell us parents anything, and I— it was, I didn't like that. I want to know, but I also want to let the school handle it because, and if they can't handle it, then they need to, com- we need to communicate about that um, and how, how we're going to handle it so that the k- kids see us as a team. And I've worked with some great schools that are telling the kids that these kids are having meltdowns at school and they're ex- thinking they're going to get to go home or they're having a meltdown about the, the stuff that I'm training parents to do at home. And then they're, telling the school, like, you know, this is what my parents are making me do. And and the school is backing the parents up and saying, well, your parents and I are on the same team and we want, we want to help you to grow and develop and, and have better functioning, (laughs) you know? So I think I've probably said more than enough about that. You get the idea, but just know that it's, you know, there is some work to be done there. And, And I think that the school's are willing to admit like, hey, we're trying to, we're scrambling too, to try to deal with this new array of problems and how to handle it. It was different when it's one or two kids in a school that have, you know, these problems, but this is a big amount of kids. And so we got to figure out how to deal with that. Another thing about anxiety is is just to realize that in anxiety um, and worry drive depression and depression in kids looks a lot different depending on the ages than it does in older kids or in adults. So they may be very anxious and very depressed, but they may not shut down in the same way that a teenager might shut down or an adult. And and some kids, even teens, will get more hyper and more out of control behavior. And they're, they kind of have like a very short fuse and a low window of tolerance, you know, when they have that anxiety and depression, just like all of us, if we're stressed, like we really struggle to be able to communicate and be able to connect 
and reach out and get the help that we need. And the more stressed that someone is, the worse that gets. And kids are already not good at that. So we have to teach those skills and help them to get that help. So when they come home and they say, you know, that they're having a problem with this kid and they're really stressed and they don't want to go to school and their stomach's hurting, you're going to have to help them to work through that, you know. So instead of, you know, oh, that's terrible and I'm going to go talk to the teacher about this, it's like, what what are some things we could do? What can we do to fix this? What can we do to make it better? So be thinking about about that, but just realize that a lot of these triggers, these kids tend to be on high alert. There's going to be a lot of what, what we're seeing more and more is just a lot of big reactions over very small infractions. So, And typically it's like the kids that tend to do things to other kids are kind of maybe the ones that are in trouble a lot will be the ones that are saying they're being bullied or, you know, and sometimes it's because they're being told, to, you know, the other kids don't want to play with them because of the stuff that's happened. It's not that they're necessarily being bullied. It's your kids are having big reactions over small things. Um, If they're being bumped in the hall, they may totally lose it. And then they're like, they they hit me in the hall or they bumped me in the hall. And, And so just know that you're not dealing with all of the facts and all of the things, you know. I'm not saying to ignore it by any sense. I don't want you to just ignore what your kids are saying. I'm just saying that, one, they may need to just talk about it and tell you. And number two, you're going to have to help them to build that resiliency of like what they can do. And you can't just swoop in and, and solve it. And neither can the school because we can't always fix everything else in, in the environment. And so we can do the best we can to have things laid out and to, to see what the school's going to do and how they're going to handle it. But we got to also help our kids to be resilient because I've worked with, you know, a lot of kids that it's like they have said that these things are happening and the parents and then something big will happen. And the parents are like, well, the school didn't do anything. We've been telling them this has been going on. We got to problem solve together what we could actually do about it. The other thing I think that's important to keep in mind about the school is that just because they can't just only cater to your child doesn't mean that they don't care about your child. You know, they have to keep the big picture in mind and the safety overall. So if your child has this huge explosion in the classroom and somebody else gets hurt or the teacher gets hurt, like the school, the school has to be concerned about everybody's safety. And so it may seem like unfair to you that your child, you know, had to leave or had to, you know, be in school suspension or out of the way of hurting people or that the policy dictates because they hurt somebody, they have to be taken off of, you know, sent home for a certain amount of days. You have to understand that they're trying to create safety for a a huge amount of people. And so that's where it's like individually, like you have to work with the school, but you also have to have this understanding that they're, they're not in a school by themselves. And I think it's important for our kids to grow up with that as well, that it, you know, you, the behavior affects everybody. Like, part of what it wasn't that you were just given a bad punishment or something like this is what we have to do in terms of safety and you had behaviors that led to that you know so that's a lot of like executive functioning type of skill building things that we work with you as you know our parent coaches me as a parent coach like I can work with you on developing that with your kid but I'm just kind of giving you an overview of like what's going on with your kids at school and just hoping that you can kind of see a bigger picture of all of it. Because I think that parents often do jump in, find help for their kids, um, maybe outside of the home. So it's like they have a problem at school. It's like, oh, maybe they need counseling. Well, maybe they do, but maybe they don't. Maybe that counselor, that's another environment, right? Like this thing happened at school. We have to find out what the school did to deal with it. You have stuff going on at home that you're working on that's def- definitely related, but just may you can't solve the thing that happened at school. But then it's like we're going to go to even another environment and have them go to a counselor in an office, which isn't related to school at all. And the counselor is going to talk to them about school and their emotions and all of that kind of stuff and give them some coping skills. But your child's ability to use those coping skills in all these different places, it's tough, right? And the counselor is the one that's there the least amount. So if if there's help at school, sometimes that helps. Again, it's usually It's not happening right at that moment, right? They go to a special class. They go to a social skills class. You know, they they go to the school counselor. But we got to help them in the moment to know what to do. And for me, I just personally think that those moments happen at home and that that's your best 
place to teach those things. So, so get the coaching that you need for, for that if, if need, you know, because I really believe that if things get stable with your kids emotionally at home and we can help them through that, it does get better in other places. And one of the things that I read this week and getting ready for this was that the school staff, school staff is saying that it's like our whole country forgot how to socialize and that everyone's in their own world trying to make it right for themselves without working towards solutions that improve things for everyone. I think that's really telling, you know, of kind of, yeah, it's kind of like that in our society right now and what we can do in our families to give our kids a more outward focus. And I think it starts like our, our, the kids I work with are hardly even aware of how things are affecting them or how their family members are affected. And so we have some work to do there. So there are things that you can do that will help a lot because serious, serious behavioral issues are usually happening at home and at school, no matter what the struggles or how old your child is. And by the way, if it's only happening at school, your child never has any meltdowns at home. You don't have any problems with compliance. They are never mouthy to you. They don't talk back. There's no defiance. They don't have any, you know, oppositional defiance, um, ADHD type stuff going on, pretty sure if they have those diagnoses, it's happening other places because it has to, in order to get that diagnosis, it has to happen in different environments. But let's say it's only happening at school, then you have something really happening at school that you need to address. But for the most part, I would say that the playing field has been a lot more level. It used to be that the kids I worked with, it was only what they were doing at home and the school had a hard time believing it. And now I think the school's like, oh, wow, like... These are really, this is really tough. Thanks for listening to The Parenting Bridge. Do you want to learn more about building a bridge to better behaviors? Pick up a copy of Dr. Michelle Alden's new book, Parenting Emotionally Distressed Kids. Or for more resources, you can click on the link for Healthy Foundations. If you would like to leave a comment or a question for Dr. Alden, there's a link in the notes. We'll see you next time. And remember, things can always get better.